Hey, welcome back. Welcome back to uh, gel coat, polishing, grinding, beating up, whatever you want to call it. I'm Lee. This is uh, the stuff I do. You might remember, or maybe last week you were checking out some of the stuff I put out. I put out two small videos about this older cobalt that we were taking the uh, oxidation out of the gel coat as well as some striping off of the gel coat. And the striping, of course, left a decent amount of ghosting. Now, I particularly wanted to use Super Duty by 3M, and this is the result that I got from that. Um, after this, I'll come back over with some Heavy Cut by 3M. Also following that, probably some Perfected EXAC. But this is just my option compared to, say, wet sanding the side. Or, as you'll see in the other uh, video clips that I've got here, sanding it all. And this is the result that I was able to get. Now, this is after the heavy cut and the perfect it, but I think you'll agree it looks really good, and it didn't take all that long. The other side, however, is being sanded, and it seems to be taking an inordinate amount of time, and it's creating a lot of mess, and it's using a lot of sanding discs, and this poor guy's back. Um, I'm, I'm guessing even his respirator's taking a beating. Anyway, um, what I'd like to show you now is how I go through the process. So here we go. These are the chemicals I'm going to start with. This is the Heavy Cut, uh, the Perfected EXCC, and on the left is the Super Duty by 3M. And most people don't use the Super Duty, or at least if they do, they certainly don't get these results. I wanted to show you how I get these results. So while I'm not going to show you absolutely every single tip and trick that I use, I'm going to give you the basics, and the basics are pretty simple. Use the grit in the compounds like wet sandpaper. So if I make cuts in one direction, I'm going to make some cuts in the 90 degree opposite direction. And I'm going to keep doing that until I get the results I like. And then I'm going to flatten out to get it smooth. Anyway, enough talk. Here we go. Here's some Super Duty by 3M. I know it's in a heavy cut bottle. It's just easier for me to pour it into whatever bottles around. And I'm going to start specifically on the bottom half of this hole. Now, I might spread this all the way out because everything on this hole needs some work, but I'm particularly going to start on the bottom of this hole, working on those uh, striped shadows, as well as kind of the topographical three-dimensional difference in the height of the gel coat, because when you remove a decal, you're basically um, exposing gel coat that hasn't been polished or sanded or shined up for years. Anyway, I've sped up this part uh, just because mostly I didn't think you wanted to enjoy my back uh, facing you. And I don't know why I forgot that the camera was here, but for one reason or another, I did. So I apologize. Um, again, focusing on this little edge here, just trying to get as much aggressive work out of the compound as I can while it's wet. And as soon as I see it start to kind of not be super aggressive, I'll flatten out and try to just smooth out the surface and take out some residual oxidation as I go and it looks a little bit something like this. Right about here, I see a little bit of the ghosting left over from the compounding, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more compound and I'm going to get a little bit more aggressive right there where I saw the whatever it was I saw. And you'll notice when I eventually move out of the way of the camera, you'll see some little teeny patterns that I use. I'm basically going up and down about three inches at a time, spinning the buffer fairly slow, but putting a lot of edge on that section right there. There you can see the little pattern from what I'm doing. That's how close my patterns are. It's basically up three inches over maybe half an inch, one inch, drop down three inches, go back up, back half an inch to an inch, down again. And I'll just keep doing that until the compound starts to, again, not look as aggressive or seem as if it's being super aggressive. At that point, I'll flatten out, work on the rest of the edges. This top one, obviously, is the second edge in this section. And, uh, well, maybe the third if you're trying to get technical. Anyway, I work my edges, uh, I work the trouble spots, and then I flatten out. And once I flatten out, I might go full speed if I've got the room to. If I don't, I'll keep it nice and slow, and I'll just keep going through the motions until the compound has basically worked itself into nothingness. Now, 
I'd like to add that when working inside, having bright lights is great. Having only a few bright lights kind of sucks. The best thing is to be out in the sun and have the sun at an angle where you can actually see the reflection off of what you're working with. I don't have that. I've got 2,000 lumen spotlights. Uh, they're made by CAT. I've sold by Costco. I'm not sure if they sell them anymore, but anything that's super bright. I've also got a string of lights in the background that you can't see, uh, LEDs and fluorescents. So I've got some things that I can play with, but realistically, the best way to do this is out in bright sunlight. Okay, so here's a little side lesson. It's not really a lesson. I switched over and now the head of my buffer is being held with my left hand. You'll see at some point the buffer and the boat decide to have a conversation and my buffer gets a little bit hoppy. Now, I do a bunch of different things to remove the hoppiness from my buffer. In this case, I'm just going to change the angle of attack. In other words, I'm holding the tail of the buffer up a little bit higher and that seems to stop the what I'll call the uh, the harmonic vibration, the, resi the resonance frequencies build up and blah, 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 blah. Next thing you know, the buffer's hopping. That might not be the actual answer, but I think that it is in this case. The other thing I can do is change hands. I can also pull the buffer off the boat, spin it up really fast, drop it back down to the speed I was using, put it back on the boat. That also sometimes will change it. Um, sometimes it's just a matter of how you're holding the buffer. Oddly enough, sometimes that alone can change everything. Okay, time for the reveal. Now remember, um, this is not the final pass. This is just, you know, what I got away with with the Super Duty. And you're going to see some holograms. You're going to see some swirls. You might actually even see some scratches on the surface. Oh my. But you're also able to see fairly uniform color, a decent reflection in the background. I'm okay with this. It's not my favorite reflection ever. I can still see, and you can see it right there, I can still see the ghosting from the stripes. Now, they're different colors. That's not necessarily having anything to do with oxidation. The part of the boat that was covered with a stripe never got waxed. In other words, all the oil that it was inherently given when it was brand new is long gone. 20, 30 years ago, eh, it had oil, and now it doesn't because there was a decal over it. So... The decal was covering the gel coat. The gel coat under it never got any oils, never got any dirt, so it's going to have a completely different color. I need to go a little bit harder. So with this next step, I'm using 3M's Heavy Cut. And while my pad's not clean, it's not dirty enough to make me think I should clean it off. This side of the pad was only being used with Heavy Cut before, and it had worked itself down to next to nothing, so I'm not worried about any large pieces of material still in the uh, fibers of the pad. Anyway, same basic thing. I'm going to spread this out, I'm going to hit my edges, and I'm going to work on some of the trouble areas. The trouble areas being where those stripes were down on the bottom, and pretty much from the middle of the hole on down, those are going to be my trouble areas and the things that I'm going to concentrate the most on. I'm going to stop talking for just a little bit, but don't worry, I'm still here. You guys have to watch this. I should have to watch it. I was already there, so technically I shouldn't have to watch it, but I'm going to. I'll be here, and I'm going to give you commentary throughout the entire thing. So if you get bored at all, I'll, I'll try to change it up in the next 10 minutes or so and maybe add some commentary that's slightly funny. Although I don't feel like this is really stuff that needs to be funny. All right, here uh, I'm just doing a long, slow pass, and I've actually sped this up uh, five times to give you an idea of how slow I go. This is a really aggressive cut for me when I'm doing it. I basically put the buffer up on an edge, and I just kind of hold it there and walk myself back at about a snail's pace. What you're seeing now is normal speed, and I'm going to duck out a little bit vocally and let you hear this and see it.
And yes, once again, you're getting an awesome view of my back. I apologize. I'm not a videographer. Uh, this isn't my passion to make edit and produce videos. I just want to buff boats. But I thought that I was capturing a little bit more than I currently was, and I, I'm not really sure how I spaced out on that. But I do apologize. Uh, if nothing else, you can see kind of what I've done through the pattern that I'm leaving behind in my uh, buffing. And yay, I switched sides. All right, maybe I remembered. Maybe I thought about it. But look, see how I'm holding the buffer with the left hand and it's getting a little bit hoppy? It wasn't doing that while I was holding the buffer with my right hand. So it tells me that it's not the boat, it's not the pad, it's the way I'm holding the buffer. And I just need to adjust it. So you'll see me do a couple little adjustments until I finally figured out the angle that I needed to hold the buffer that she liked. And yes, it's a she. And right about now, you're starting to see kind of the results of the heavy cut. And it's not bad. I also don't think most people compound heavy cut to this point. Usually they just kind of try to get rid of the marks and stuff that they leave behind with the Super Duty. But I've found that heavy cut in the right hands can do some amazing things. And it's one of the reasons I try to show you guys um, maybe just a one-step process to get oxidation out of a boat as opposed to going through, you know, a bunch of sanding discs and then a whole bunch of weird compounds and then a finishing compound and then a swirl remover and then a cleaner wax and then a blah, 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 blah. next. Who's got time for that? I realize that this took a little time. It's super duty, it's heavy cut, and it's perfected. But the overall result is A, I'm cleaner, B, it took a lot less time, and C, it's the same result visually. Um, next year, both sides are going to oxidize and fade out a little bit. Both sides are going to show that stripe. Next year, though, I'll be using just heavy cut with perfected EXAC, and probably the year after that, maybe just perfected EXAC. Now, once I get to that point, I'll just be using a polish, and I'll be doing it maybe every three or four months for the first year or two. After that, every six months, and after that, hopefully once a year. I know it's a long process, but for a guy who owned this boat for 20 years and let that oxidation build up and let that decal burn into the boat, it's really kind of the price of owning an older boat and learning how to maintain it is the next step. And people might say, well, if you sanded it and you did a really good job and you got rid of all of that, you wouldn't have any of those problems where you have to keep re-waxing it and re-compounding it. No, not necessarily. I mean, you've got to have a really good surface and a really good polish to last through a year. Even if you've gotten all the oxidation out, oxidation is oxidation. It's rust. It's contagious. So when it's touching one part of the gel coat, it's going deep into the rest of the gel coat, whether you can see it or not. This boat has oxidation, whether I can see it on the compounded side or my buddy can see it on the sanded side. It is going to come back out. It's part of boat life. Get over it. Again, this is just heavy cut. You're going to see some swirls. You might see some holograms. A lot of it's going to be from the rag. The rag doesn't really pick up all of the oil that I'm leaving behind with the compound. But not bad. And knowing that I have to come back over it with one more compound tells me that I can probably get this looking really good. And hopefully I can see the detail around the actual LED on that little uh, portable light. That's kind of the goal. I went ahead and cleaned out my pad. The very next thing I'm going to do is apply a little bit of Perfected EXAC. That bottle is just a Perfected bottle. Again, I've got gallons of this stuff, so I just fill up the old bottle. So trust me, it's Perfected EXAC. And you might guess, first out, spreading, then hit the edges, do a little stuff in the middle, flatten out, speed up, try to get a nice finish. You guys have seen this now. This will be your third time in just this video. God forbid you watch the other 200 I've got. You'll see it almost 100 times again. It's the same process. It's the same steps. It's the same technique. 
All it is is a different compound, and you don't see me sweating. I weigh 140 pounds. I'm 48 years old. I'm not really busting my ass to get this done. I'm just going through the motions. If you want to do sanding and wet sanding, by all means, have fun. You can do a really good job, but even after that, you've still got to compound it. So enjoy the video, learn a thing or two about how to compound and how to get your sanding to look amazing when you're done. I'm not saying that sanding isn't cool. Um, if I had a brand new boat, like I just bought this thing, I would probably sand it all the way down to fresh gel coat. And then from there, I'd compound it up, build up the surface to a high gloss, polish it, and then never worry about compounding it again. But I've got time to devote to it. And my time is my money, so I've got ample money and time to devote to it. Most people don't have $4,000 to throw at a sanding job for a boat. But they do have $800 to 1000 So we give them options. If they choose the cheaper of the two, this is the quick, easy way to do it. I think you should, uh, I don't know, I think you should try it at least once. All right, my edges have been tackled. You saw me do that long, slow pass a little bit quicker this time with the Perfected than I did with the Heavy Cut. And then I'm working on the top edges. And after that, I'll do a little cross cutting in the middle, smooth it out, get to a point where the compound shows me that it's ready for a little bit of high speed, and then I'll give it some high speed. And then I'll stop when the compound tells me that I can go ahead and stop. Guys, stay with me. There's only like four more minutes. And when I'm done, you'll get the reveal. You'll see how it all turned out. So just be patient. I was going to do some narration at this point, but I thought, you know what, my back has done all the talking thus far, so I'll just let it continue. Basically just smooth, flat, even. Pressure is light, um, the back and forth up and down is slow, and all I'm doing is kind of massaging the surface. I'm literally listening uh, to the buffer and feeling it, and if it seems like there's something in there that says, uh, hey, I need to sit here for a second, or there's a little bump or a wiggle, I let the buffer kind of play there. There's no real pattern for me when I'm buffing a boat. All I am looking for right now is the reflection from those two lights to have the exact same kind of sheen, luster, and swirl. So if I do a pass left to right or right to left and those lights give me the exact same reflection, I'm like, all right, that was a good pass. Kind of like this. The reflection that you see, both the two dots at the top and the two dots of light at the bottom, both had the same swirl and the same hologram. That's a good sign to me, knowing how random and chaotic I was. That to me tells me that I've covered everything about as equally as I possibly can. Again, keep in mind, this has not been waxed. When I do wax it, I'm going to apply it by hand and take it off with a random orbital polisher. Um, this also hasn't been cleaned, so you're going to see some smudges from some oil and some weird colors and discoloration. No big deal. I'm going to take this boat outside and show you what it looks like in the sunlight. Just give me a sec. And as you can see, the sanding continues. He's primarily just working on that bottom stripe. Hasn't really dug too deep into the rest of the gel coat, and I wouldn't even want to tackle this front area. 
there's a light, there's a vent, there's hole numbers. Yuck. Anyway, sandpaper and all that does not seem fun to me. And look how many discs he's going through. I mean, my goodness, those things cost money, right? And we're back outside. I wanted to do a little extra work with the Perfected EXAC and I needed the sunlight to do it. Obviously my man here is still working on his sanding, but then we turned it around so that he could see his side in the sun. That way it was fair. Now I did a little video on how I did the top side. Uh, don't worry about that. All I was trying to show you here is on this hole particularly. You can sand it, you can buff it. They both work. One seems a little bit harder and takes a lot longer than the other one did. That was my point. If you want to sand, sand. If you don't want to and you want to enjoy the rest of your summer, well, I say get a buffer. Do what I did. Anyway, if you have any questions, hit me up in the comment section. Uh, I appreciate a thumbs up or tell a friend. Anyway, thanks for watching. The standard is the standard.